wanted to keep the rest of the space very uh, soft and serene. So we built up installations that use light. Uh, these are uh, LEDs that we kind of integrate. And they have, uh, they're programmed to kind of give a certain uh, life to it, so it's not a static installation. And this actually embraced the whole food court around. So you actually see an interesting installation from different perspectives. Uh, we created a reflected light. This is unfortunately the image is not very good. But the whole idea is the lights inside these heating metal steel uh, uh, domes. They concave and they kind of create these interesting uh, moving uh, reflections. Uh, this is just about the highest traffic area in the mall. So it kind of creates the, almost reflects the movement that the mall has. So like I said, the tree of life, we actually, this entire property was, uh, context is very important. The whole mall was designed around two trees and a lake. Uh, we took the whole tree of life as a concept and we built up uh, a fairly large uh, 50 meter uh, stone installation. This is the artwork for it. So it had a moon and a sun. The moon actually had uh, LEDs in it, so it actually is, was in sync with the moon phases. And uh, you'd have the Satvario marble light up to create a full moon to a fine crescent, which is the one at the, the other end there. And we then interpreted it into a large installation that really offset the whole visual clutter of a mall and the you know, dynamism of a mall. In some sense, you kind of get this leader that you come in and out of the space that uh, uh, is very, very lively. And of course, we planned it such that it had an interesting effect uh, with uh, lighting. Moving on to using lights to build character. Uh, Titans are a watch brand and we wanted to create a time installation. And uh, we use, uh, again, it's, it's static as an image, but here we looked at a time installation based on the pixels of light. And they actually randomly create this uh, starburst around the branding unit and uh, create a fairly interesting dynamic uh, facade for the uh, frontage of the. And each of those red dots is actually the symbol that is programmed to light up randomly. So I think lighting itself is something that really plays a strong role in me, but combine it with color. This is when we had done the first identity of Cafe Coffee Day. Uh, the whole idea of bringing the color purple into uh, cafes. Cafes were typically seen as uh, the warm tones, the warm scent ivories, and we wanted to bring this whole sense of uh, creativity at, uh, you know, from, uh, from the youth's perspective because we were looking at a target customer who were basically teenagers who have just finished college and they're out to get careers. So the whole idea was a lot can happen over a uh, cup of coffee and we wanted some element that breaks away from the conventional palette of uh, cafes. And fortunately the purple has continued even to today in their 2000 cafes. Uh, we wanted a warm Ring from the purple, so we've actually built up a yellow palette internally. We just, uh, again, I'm not going into details here, but just to get a sense of how we played with light and color. Uh, the two parts of it, uh, the color really plays up the, the essence of the brand. And uh, when we reinterpreted the uh, retail chain, this is just getting rolled out now. Uh, we brought in a, a Functional lighting combined with a certain amount of mood that you create with transparencies, translucencies, and it's not just about lights, but the effects that you can get with uh, the uh, with uh, lighting, simple lighting methods as such. Moving on to how do you build brand identities around uh, uh, this using light? I think here, we, at the time, Fast Track started off, we actually took the property of blue and had blue ceilings and blue floors and very, very uh, cluttered uh, display. We didn't want organized display. We want, we believe that the whole sense of keeping something dense, close and cluttered would excite uh, the youth. And uh, from a lighting perspective, that kind of gave this whole tunnel effect of blue that we built up for uh, the brand. And it's kind of worked quite successfully in terms of creating this whole sense of dynamism, something that is you get an exception of choice, but then, you know, the number of products is not as much. Countered by uh, lingerie. Lingerie is a very, it's, a, it's still a taboo space. You don't want to be seen as much in a lingerie store versus in a store that you want to be seen buying something. So therefore lighting plays another interesting role there when you kind of look at how we can 
soften and uh, create certain amount of opacities in the way you build up the space. And in this case, again, light, like I said, augments the space. Moving on to interactions, we've actually started building up uh, play of light between lighting installations. And uh, what happens in the space is that a designer has one part of the entire uh, chain of it. A, a team that kind of works on it. We, we actually work with a software engineer to code uh, the lighting installation. So it's actually a, a communication platform for a CEO in Microsoft to share his vision with his company. And we did that as a lighting installation. So we actually wrote software that could help pull out colors or aggregate colors from the image and you know, light up the installation. So it always looks like a lighting installation, irrespective of what communication platform you use. So this idea we've now started pushing out of can we build uh, retail properties out of creating a combination of light, uh, digital media and of course real product. This is a work in progress idea where you take a facade of a store and you can look at things that can be dynamically changing. Today I wanted to launch uh, or showcase one product, tomorrow I want to showcase a completely different one and technology today allows you to do that and in a very interesting way. So in this kind of basically combines light uh, uh, with real products, with dynamic digital media and allows you to kind of transform uh, a facade of a store at the store level. So it gives you a lot of flexibility from a store perspective. Moving on to how we played with light uh, to draw attention to small products. Uh, visual merchandising is a big area that needs lighting design to get almost immersed into the way, the way you kind of communicate stories. This is for a solar watch and we've played with infinite reflections of light rings. So we've done a LED slab and it uh, has two, uh, two one-way mirrors in it. And it kind of gives you this almost bottomless feel to the display. And then plays up on the whole idea that light drives the watch. And therefore that becomes the story. We've done a different interpretation of light here where we've kind of looked at the edge. If you know about edge is a very slim watch and it's two dimensional conceptually. So we looked at these slats that are lit up two dimensionally, blue edge lit uh, slats and therefore the entire display becomes uh, a dynamic display with uh, slivers of blue that kind of create this balance of technology and uh, precision. Um, a few instances of how we've addressed solving problems with uh, workspaces. We've uh, We've designed lights where today workspaces are constantly changing. You don't work with a laptop the whole, you know, whole eight hours. And uh, we studied the way workspaces are evolving and therefore designed modular systems that allow you to vary the quality of light, uh, limit brightness, focus it, unplug it if you want. And of course, create these with uh, the least amount of footprint. Because today, footprint in real estate in every area is uh, what is simple to kind of manufacture. Uh, for example, the light on the extreme end here gives you a whole range of combinations that you can create in terms of light quality and it's meant to kind of take up as little space on a yes, These are simple instances of how we could use existing simple technologies and build up uh, product uh, ideas that work for the Indian uh, consumer. Going to a space that we just started touching upon is how do we create the paradigm of solar and lighting and can we look at uh, uh, building a, a, some kind of a new design paradigm for solar. I mean so, solar lighting needs necessarily a large battery, it needs a panel and uh, they need to be integrated. So it's not, it's unlike a lighting installation but it needs to be done smartly. So we've started building up prototypes of uh, a whole range of um, these installations that in a way embrace the fact that you need volume for, you know, and therefore bring uh, solar technology in a more seamless manner in public lighting. So we are at the stage where we are building all these and kind of we've installed a lot of these and these are just tests that we do and then we help companies uh, build on it. We are actually building up a, how do you use lighting installations in the day? Uh, a light post is completely dead in the day. Uh, there is there a sense of utility during the day? So we can look at, can you tell time, can you navigate a street or can you create some other utility in the day? 
And this, of course, means more work from a, a robotics perspective, writing integration, and software integration, trying to build up smart, intelligent products. So these are all things that are possible today for uh, in a manner which is very rugged and uh, worthwhile for the Indian. This is an old example of how we played with light and time. Uh, we took it up to a proof of concept at that stage. Uh, basically, you get different qualities of light depending on the time of night that you see the lighting situation. And it's a time piece in itself. Uh, it uses a gear mechanism that allows you to throw light on a on, on mirror and therefore throw interesting reflections around. So public spaces and how do you create dynamic interpretations of public spaces. Lighting can play a very interesting role in there. Moving on to uh, nothing that's not in the retail space, but we use light. I think lighting is something that we embrace in every single category that we do. And uh, we've designed a lot of products, but here I just pulled out one that kind of talks about uh, interaction. It's a water purifier. And uh, it basically shows you cool water. And we've devised a way of, uh, you know, when the moment you activate it, it actually has a blue column of light. Uh, that shows you blue water and therefore your interaction with the device starts creating a signature that you can own as a brand and therefore light becomes such an important part of that whole uh, story and now this is something that you can create a platform where you can play with light and then showcase warm water, cool water, you know, tepid water, various things like that and it's something that you, you know, it's a device that you're creating a platform for using light and then you build up uh, on that. In the acoustic space, we play with sound and light. Um, like I said, every experience is sensorial and lighting is one part of it. This is a surround sound system that goes into any bulb socket. And uh, we've done a generation 1 and generation 2. The generation 2 actually use LEDs to create an interaction with the sound. And uh, since it's plugged into sockets, you know, it's something that gives an interesting manage of uh, sound and light. Okay, I mean, this is not functional light, but it's something that start, we start using light as a strong part of every uh, experience that we have. This is not about lighting, but lighting is very important and the surface quality is something that we believe is something that's as important as the light source. And that's the only reason I'm showing this uh, product is the fact that you want this high luster is not about just the light, but it's about the surface quality that light falls on. And this is the case on every product that you do or every you know, tangible space that you have uh, this. So this is an indirect application of light. Uh, a brushed surface is very different from a polished surface and it's entirely because of uh, reflections. And that, I think the more you get into uh, metal crafted products, that becomes a bigger and bigger story that uh, you play with light indirectly. Yeah, sorry. I mean, surfaces again, uh, refractions, reflections, all of this is part of lighting. It's, you don't need a light source to play with light. It's uh, important to embrace the entire thing in totality to kind of understand how one can use uh, a play of uh, light. A simple thing of creating a focal point of light which is within the focal length of a of a mirror creates this whole pool of gold light. Mm -hmm. Adiya is done in silver. So again, it's an interesting play of uh, simple lighting principles. Uh, texture is really important. And like I said, I think texture interplayed with light is what really creates the final perception that you have of uh, the effect of light. Transparencies, refractions, uh, these are indirect things that you play with when you design uh, objects like this. I mean, here without light, a play of light, this bottle is nothing. Uh, when you empty this bottle, you actually don't appreciate any of the uh, water flow indentations that are created on it. It's only when you put the, water, the liquid in that the play of refraction through that of light really creates this whole sense of uh, flowing water. Another example of uh, play of light, again, it's not going to be light itself, but infinite reflections. We this whole this is a formula on top where we designed a burst of the black colors. Uh, so the black colors were only in a single point in the cup, but it reflected in a very interesting way to create uh, almost a burst of color in the cup. Uh, finally, this is the last example. Um, 
it's a play of light. But I think it's to give you a sense, it's it gives you the sense of the total perspective of where light lighting is, and one needs to look at everything in totality. I just pulled the whole idea of the light bit. But I mean, for those of you who don't know what waiting, the waiting state using soil picked up from every state in India. And the colors that you see, see there is all the soil picked up from each state. We crafted it into fabric and then created the vacuum. And there's slivers of uh, color that you see as hints. Now those colors actually we work with technology and embedded GPS technology. So it really is about intelligence and that's the future of writing. Um, where uh, it's more responsive and it's not as uh, um, you know, reactive. So it's in that sense it's something that is intelligent on itself. And here for example a small example of that was the fact that we uh, each country that is making when we the colors of the flags uh, automatically came up uh, you know, as an installation of light there. And I think these are small little instances that make um, the play of light itself uh, almost seamlessly important. It's not about just the light fix, so it's about every single bit of interaction that is visually done. I mean, everything needs light for that is visual. So that's an example that I wanted to end on saying that I think today lighting is about uh, a larger part of a sensorial experience and it's about intelligence. I mean, lighting is, a, I mean, it's valid today. You can actually anything you want with uh, lighting today and um, that's something that I want to just leave back with you on the space. Thank you.